Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? It is 3.46 p.m. and I am just starting my vlog from last night. And today is gonna be a short vlog, you guys, because I have things I have to do today. There is a lot of drama popping off and I wanna make a few drama videos. So I'm gonna do that when I get home. I just did, I was just behind Starbucks, just did a Starbucks review and got my coffee. And um, let me just tell you, first of all, about <laughs> my night and today. So I, last night, well yesterday, <laughs> there's no reason why my vlog is not done. Let me tell you why, okay? Because yesterday, I was just kind of like, really like tired all day long. I was in a great mood, but I was just kind of tired. And um, so I had talked to Tanya a couple times and she wanted to get to the meeting early um, because one of Tanya's sponsees was celebrating a birthday. So um, we had to get there early so that Tanya could give, you know, we wanted to make sure we were there on time to give her her coin and stuff. And Tanya had brought flowers and it was really nice. And it was so exciting and um, so anyway, so I was like, well that will be no problem. I said, I think I'm gonna um, maybe just like take the day off and not do any videos today because I don't wanna be like rushing and all that kind of stuff. And um, so I did that and um, I had to run some errands throughout the day. And um, so I did that and um, a bunch of errands. I have a friend of mine that is currently in the hospital so I wanted to like get some magazines together and so I went to Barnes and Noble and bought a bunch of magazines and <laughs> a sticker book and just some word puzzle and just some silly stuff and took it over and dropped it off um, you obviously can't go in the hospital but dropped it off at the front door and um, so I was just kind of like running around all day yesterday I should have been listening to my audiobook is what I should have been doing because I am Starting to, I don't I want to get in a reading slump already in January when I was doing so good. And I think it was the last book that did it to me because, I, well, first of all, I just bought two books today um, on Amazon. And I bought, there was this book that I read years and years and years and years ago. And um, it was called, I can't remember what the guy's, first name is Jeff maybe Scott Scott Helm is the author he's actually written quite a few books he wrote a book called mysterious skin and they turned it into a movie it's really it's very dark but it was very well written and um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like JT Leroy so I wanted to see if they had it on audible it's not on audible I'm gonna pull in here for just a second and I have my phone on so it won't turn off and I don't want to run the battery out. So I'm going to turn in here real quick. I've been taking a bunch of um, vitamins every day and like, when I get up in the morning and probably me not eating first is part of the problem because I take it uh, with my medicine for my epilepsy. For those of you that don't know, I have epilepsy. I have juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. I've had it since I was, I think 27 or 28. I was diagnosed. So I take um, 1,500 milligrams of Depakote daily. I take 1,000 in the morning and 500 at night. But anyway, I've been taking a lot of vitamins. I've been taking uh, vitamin D, vitamin C. I've been taking zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B12. And um, I take them all at the same time, and usually it affects my stomach, and it makes my stomach kind of hurt. My stomach doesn't hurt today, but I've also noticed that it kind of gives me a little bit of a headache when I take all that stuff together. Somebody, this was like a year ago, and I actually asked my neurologist about it, and he was like, that is true, that something to do with Depakote on an, on an empty stomach can cause you to have really like horrible headaches. Well, I also have migraine disorder, um, associated with seizures and um, so I've had those I got diagnosed with migraine disorder at the same time that I got diagnosed with epilepsy 
So I always just kind of thought that my migraines, that I always have some level of a migraine every single day. I've taken migraine medicine in the past. It doesn't really help. I've taken Imitrex. I hated it. Midran, I hated it. Um, and I don't take anything for it anymore except for Aleve. And unless it gets really bad, I try not to take the Aleve. Um, and then there was a while that people were like, well, Aleve doesn't really help with... That's what my doctor had told me to take because of the certain kind of migraines that I have. Um, and then people were recommending for me to take um, Motrin. And I did take Motrin for a little while and it seemed to help differently. Um, I can't take like, people always recommend for me to take like Tylenol um, or Excedrin, like the migraine Excedrin. I can't take anything that has aspirin in it because it interacts with um, my Depakote. So anyway, I've been having like bad headaches, but I've been noticing that they don't hit me until I take my medicine and my vitamins in the morning. So I really do believe that that's true, but there's, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that I can do about it. Um, and even though my migraines are bad, like today, today my migraine is, it, it's, I always just say headache, but it's, you know, there's a difference between, if you have migraines, you'll know what I'm talking about. There's a difference between migraines and headaches. Headaches, and I can tell the difference, um, but, okay, like a, a migraine is more of pressure, and it's, for me, it's in the front of my head right here, um, and my, like if I have a headache, it's more kind of like all over, if that makes sense. I don't have headaches as often as I have migraines, but I do have both, and I can tell the difference. Um, so anyway, I don't know why I was telling that, but I woke up today, and so last night, we, um, I picked up Tanya early, and we got to the meeting early, and um, I just kind of like cleaned up the house yesterday, and didn't really do a whole lot. Oh, but the other thing was, by the time that um, I got to wanting to sit down and make some videos, it was kind of late in the day. And so I was like, if I start making videos, this is the thing, is that once I get started, like I don't like to stop because I get so excited making videos, that I was like, if I start now, it was like four or 4.30, I was like, I'm gonna be rushing to pick up Tanya and I don't wanna do that. Like, you know, this is more important. Um, my friend's uh, sobriety birthday. So I didn't wanna do that. So I was just like, okay. I was washing clothes and all that kind of stuff. I actually need to wash our uh, sheets today. I need to wash our linens and stuff. Um, so maybe I'll do that later. And uh, let's see what else. So yeah, so we, uh, I brought my camera with me last night. I was gonna vlog right after I got done with the meeting. We went to the meeting, fantastic meeting. It's just, sometimes, you know, I go, I mean, I love going to meetings, period. <clears throat> and it's really sad right now because I mean, it's, it's a good thing, but that a lot of in-person meetings are closed because of COVID. A lot of meetings take places in hospitals or in places like churches that are closed down. So fortunately, my home group um, opened back up, I don't know, six months or eight months ago. But we're in a church uh, auditorium, so like a church... Uh, it's like a big gym rec room for churches, for a church. So we're able to spread out. So we're like 10 feet apart from each other and um, everybody has to wear a mask and everybody has to use hand sanitizer when you come in the door and stuff like that. And so it's nice that we can meet in person. I really, really miss in-person meetings. And there was a point in my sobriety just a couple years ago where I was going to it like six meetings a week. And uh, most of those meetings that I was going to have been closed down since. And it makes me really, really sad. They are still continuing via Zoom. And I love Zoom meetings, because thank God. I mean, it's, it's so crazy to me. You know, like, I get real emotional thinking about this, but the fact that, like, you know, 12-step programs started, like, in the late 30s, you know, and it's like, here we are in 2020, and even in all of this kind of, like, craziness, um, we're able to exist, you know, and survive through all of this. Um, 
mean, if you had asked me five years ago, like, do you think that 12 step programs could survive through like Zoom calls and stuff? I would say no, at never, but they have, and people are getting sober through Zoom calls, you know? Um, and it's just, it's a, it's a miracle. And um, I had another friend of mine last night that got um, 44 years sober, which was, I mean, just 44 years of sobriety. It's just like crazy, you know? It's like, all the lives changed around that and you know all the positivity that's come as a result of that and I don't know it's just incredible I just what I, I left last night the meeting and I just felt very very full of love and spirituality and I just felt um, really really um, I don't know I was talking to a friend of mine after the meeting and we were talking about how there have been periods of my sobriety that, and, and this is definitely true of like the 40 years that I didn't go to meetings, but there have been other points in my sobriety as well where I didn't realize I was this emotional today. I've been so emotional since I woke up today. And um, there have been points in my sobriety where I felt dry, but I did not feel sober. Like I didn't feel, like there's a difference when you talk about being clean or being sober. Um, where you're working on, you know, the inside and you're emotionally sober and, you know, you wake up and you feel full of spirit and you feel great, you know, like, I can honestly say right now in my life, like, I feel truly, truly sober and inside and out and there's just a difference to it, you know, and anyway, I left last night and it just, I, it's such a fantastic meeting last night and Tani and I, I went and took her to get a fountain pop and we talked and we drove around for a little bit, which was really nice, but I ended up getting home at like, oh, probably 10 o'clock, and Alex had just taken a shower because he had done hot yoga, and um, he loves that hot yoga. And um, I'm trying to think of which way to go where the sun's gonna be not as bad. I'm gonna turn right, and if it's bad, I'll just turn back around up here. <coughs> but um, Alex was taking a sh he had taken a shower so he was just like laying in bed relaxing playing his game and looking through stuff oh is that better that's better I mean I know some of you don't watch it you just listen to it but anyway um, so he was with the dogs the dogs were being so sweet and stuff so I just kind of like laid in bed for a second and I my plan had been um, like I had done my hair yesterday and everything it looks so nice <laughs> Doesn't, well, I'm taking the hat off. Sometimes my hats hurt my head a little bit. Um, I had um, planned to just come home and um, change into like a comfy sweatshirt or something. And because I tried to dress a little bit nice last night, and by nice I mean <laughs> jeans and a t-shirt and my UGG boots. But I was like, I'm gonna put on a comfy sweatshirt. I'm gonna go vlog. And then I'm going to um, go vlog. Oh, I'm gonna go vlog, and then I'm going to go uh, listen to my audiobook. And I was hoping to get like a majority of this Jana DeLeon book. By the way, she just announced her cover, or she showed her cover on her Facebook group yesterday for her 19th book. I'm so excited. And it's supposed to come out by the end of February, which I am like, just cannot even wait. Not only that, but Sean David Hutchinson, who is one of my favorite authors of life, he uh, wrote We Are the Ants, which is like such a fantastic young adult novel. It's about this um, gay kid that he, like before the book starts, his boyfriend has taken his own life. And it, and he feels, he thinks he's been abducted by, I think he has been abducted, abducted by aliens. And he just gets dropped in like certain areas around his, how, his town. It takes place in Florida. And um, so Sean David Hutchinson always kind of writes like science fiction, but molds it into like true life stuff that's going on. It's, he, it's fantastic how he does it. It's very similar to kind of Adam Silvera, but in a completely different way. Um, and so, actually, I was reading the synopsis for this. He has a new book that just came out yesterday, and I bought it already on Audible. I was so excited. It's called something like An Unconventional Love Story That Takes Place in Outer Space. It's called something like that. Um, 
Here, I'll pull in here and tell you what it's called. Since I'm right at the gas station. It is called... I bought another book yesterday, too. A Complicated Love Story That Takes Place in Outer Space. What was the other book that I bought yesterday? I guess I didn't buy another book. I guess that's the only one. The Gianna DeLeon book that's coming out is called... Here I have it. Right here. Oh. Fortune Fun House. I'm so excited! Death is a roller coaster, it says. I'm so excited for that. And then I was when I was at uh, Barnes & Noble yesterday, I found this Carl Hyacin book called Squeeze Me. So I think I might get that too. But anyway... So that book came out, and I was really excited about that, and I downloaded that on Audible. Um, my battery is already halfway burnt out, which is not a good thing, because I have to make a bunch of videos when I get home, and I have one battery at home that's charging, and I have one battery with me. Um, what was I gonna say? Do, 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 do. So I was just laying there in bed with Alex and I was so comfy and so cozy. I was like, and it was early, you know, it was like 10 or 10.30 and I was like, okay, I'm just going to lay down until like 11.30 or 12 and then I'm going to get up and do it. Well, I set my alarm and I was out. And when my alarm went off, I just turned my alarm off. Then I woke up today. I think that what happened, okay, so yesterday I took a Tucker to the vet, which I'll talk about in just a second. And... Um, his appointment was at 10.50, so I got up at like 10, and I had gone to bed late, so I only got like five or six hours of sleep. And then I, um, was doing, when I decided that I wasn't gonna like make any videos, I laid down, and I wanted to lay down for like two hours, and it ended up I could only lay down for like an hour before I had to get ready, because I was doing laundry and stuff. So I was waiting to put the laundry in the dryer. So I think I just was really tired, and it had been like a couple days of me going to bed super late. So last night, I lay down. Well, when I woke up, I woke up at like, it was weird. I woke up at like 3 o'clock in the morning, and I looked at the clock, and I was like, okay, well, I should, 3 or 3.30. And I was like, I should get up and go vlog now. And I was like, well, it's late now, you know, whatever. By the way, the last time that I talked about vlogging during the day, there are a few of you on here that were just like, vlog whenever you want, you know, like, you know, we don't care. Thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it because I know there's a lot of people that just do not like the daytime vlogs and quite frankly, I don't love vlogging during the day. Um, there just seems something, I do get distracted, you know, in my thoughts and whatever during the day and so uh, when I'm vlogging at night, it's just... Um, it's just very peaceful for me and very cathartic. And so I enjoy doing that, especially as a way to kind of like end or wind down my day. Um, but anyway, so I, the, the nighttime vlogs will continue. But um, so I woke up at like 3 or 3.30. I don't remember what time it was. But I do remember that the next time that I woke up, it was 5.58. And I was like, because I looked right at the clock, it was like, five, it said 5.58. And I was like... Well, what's the point in getting up and vlogging now? I might as well just sleep, you know? And then Alex left for work at like 8 o'clock, I think. Something like that. And I had to move my car. And so I went out and I moved my car and I came back in. And I was so hungry because I hadn't eaten when I... I ate yesterday afternoon before I took a nap. I didn't eat... Um, after I got home from the meeting last night. And so I came home, or I got, after Alex left this morning, I made um, a cheese sandwich and then I had some potato salad and onion chip and I mean, this is the greatest breakfast in the world, right? And um, I started yesterday and then I finished it yesterday. The, I finished today, the first episode, and I started the second episode of this documentary on Netflix called Surviving Life or Surviving Death. I can't remember. Have you guys, I think it's Surviving Death. Have you guys seen this? I didn't even, nobody has really been talking about this. It's just like six part series. I think it's six parts. Yeah, six parts. About near death experiences, mediums, afterlife. It is really, really scientifically well done. I mean, it is really well done. And, and, um, as many of you know, because I've talked about it on here for a long time, like, this is an area that I'm extremely interested in, um, is near-death experiences, and, you know, I had a huge fear of death for a long time, and just hearing these people's stories and all this stuff, it's just, it's very comforting, um, and 
And, and one of the things that was interesting is they talked a lot about the, the experiences being similar across cultures and religions, which I thought was, when you think about maybe like one universal kind of spiritual idea, and that, you know, everybody across these different cultural beliefs had very similar experiences with near-death experiences and mediumship and things like that. It was interesting. So anyway, I need to turn the heat on a little bit. It's getting kind of cold in here. Um, so I watched... I finished the first episode this morning and I started the second episode, but I only got like a couple minutes into it, five minutes into it or something, and I stopped. And I was like, okay, boys, let's go back to bed for just a little bit. And I really, well, by that point, I think it was like 8.30 or something like that. Well, I don't know what time Alex left. I feel like he left earlier than that, but by then it was like 8.30. And I was like, okay, I'm going to... Um, sleep till like 10 o'clock and then I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna go vlog. I had this whole plan set up for what I was gonna do today, right? Well, that didn't happen. I ended up sleeping so late into the afternoon, so late into the afternoon. Um, and then I got up and I took the dogs out, took my medicine and my vitamins and stuff. And then I went and did this review video at Starbucks and now I'm vlogging. So that's what happened. Yesterday I took Tucker to the vet. Okay, so here's the story. I don't even know when it was. I think it was when we got our shots last year or something like that, or the dogs got their shots, that I saw another vet that's in, because our vet was out. So I saw another vet. He's like the lead vet at this place. And he was like, your dogs need, like they have, I think somebody had said something to us about it before, but they were like, your dogs have like what they call mush mouth or something, I don't know. But it's basically, Boo and Tucker have horrible teeth, okay? Boo's are a hundred times worse than Tucker's. Tucker, actually, out of all three dogs in the last, you know, five years, like, his t his teeth have stayed pretty good, which was interesting because when we went yesterday, she was like, he needs it. it he definitely needs his teeth out. She was like, I, I don't, I haven't seen Boo in a while. And I was like, well, if Tucker needs his out, then Boo definitely needs his out because Boo's are, like, a hundred times worse. So, anyway... You know, Alex and I are trying to be the best dog dads that we possibly can be ever. Like, you know, we're so, like had we not caught PP's heart disease with the cough when we did, he wouldn't have lived as long as he was able to live, which is why it's important to constantly take your dogs into the vet. And I mean, not constantly, but to have regular checkups and things like that. Um, and that was just a commitment that we made several years ago, you know, was that we were going to be the best dog dads that we could be. And, um, I mean, as we should, right? Like, as anybody should. So, when she was telling us about that having their teeth extracted, at first, I was kind of like, mm, I, like, I felt really bad. I was like, I don't want to have to have my dog's teeth taken out. Well... So, I had talked to some other people that had had their dog's teeth extracted because they were bad. And they're like, oh no, it's not bad at all. They recover really quickly. Like, you know, and it takes like a week and a half for them to recover. And then, you know, they like, en they just enjoy life more. So, I had brought Boo in. Um, because he wasn't feeling good. That was a couple weeks ago. Then I scheduled the appointment for Tucker because Boo had to be checked out to see if he could have the teeth extraction. And that was part of that as well. So then I brought Boo in because at that time, now, the last time I came in, we saw a different vet too. This other woman that's in there. And she said, she wrote up an estimate for us and all this kind of stuff. And she was like, um, but we need to see Tucker and yada, yada, yada. So... I brought in Tucker to, I thought, to have the x-rays done yesterday, the chest x-rays for his heart murmur, but it was also to just do his, you know, uh, bi I think it's biannual or semi-annual, I don't know, checkup of his heart, because he's a heart murmur. So, of course, Alex and I have been completely freaked out about this heart murmur. I really haven't talked a whole lot about it, but my fear with having gone through what we went through with PP was, please do not like on the heels of that, let Tucker like have full blown heart disease or something. I mean, we just have been really worried about it, right? So I took him to the vet. Well, the, when we were supposed to take him to the vet a couple weeks ago, I took him and then they had to reschedule because they had had an emergency. So took him in yesterday and um, she said his heart murmur 
she said it was really good. She said a number, she said it was like at a four. I don't know what that means, but anyway, and I said, well, I don't, and I said, I don't know what that means. And she means, she goes, that means it's pretty good. She was like, he's got a healthy, like heart besides the heart murmur. And, and she goes, this dog is really, really healthy. And I was like, yay. And she was like, everything about him is healthy. Alex was really worried that he was going blind. Um, cause he said that he was like walking into stuff, which I haven't really noticed. Um, so she checked his eyesight. She says, eyesight is fine. She's like, you can tell he has, I think she's a cataract. She's like, he has nothing wrong with his eyes. His eyes are fine. And, um, she was like, his heart is doing really well. And Boo had already got a good bill of health checked out. So, so what she recommended was that we have both of their teeth, Boo and Tugger's teeth extracted. But first they have to have, um, well, Ch Tucker has to have a chest x-ray and both Boo and Tucker need to have their mouths x-rayed. And apparently they have to be put under like, a, like a light anesthesia for that or anesthetic for that. So, um, we have to bring them back in and they have to be there all day. They have to be there like at 7 a.m. and they get to come home at like 5. And then their vaccinations are also due, well, just two of them. The Bordetello and then the other one is, I don't know which one it is, the Lipsa something. But it's the one where if they're like in the, by, in the woods by other animals and whatever, they can get sick. And then that sickness they can carry to us as well. So, last year was the first year, I think maybe it was a year before that we had that one because we didn't know about that one before. So, um, one is due in March and one is due in April. And so she said, we can just do those at the same time, even though it's a month early, it'll be fine. So we're going to have their vaccinations done that same day. So we don't have to overwhelm these pups, you know, with bringing them in and stuff like that. So they're going in at the end of February as early as she can get them in there to do all this. Um, and then after, if those x-rays all come back fine for us to do the extraction, then we're going to have Boo and Tucker's ex teeth extracted, whatever we can, as soon as possible. One of the things that she said to me yesterday, which really, well, first of all, the teeth extraction is for a couple reasons. Number one, it uh, prolongs their life. Number two, a lot of dogs get really, really sick and get like life damaging infections through their mouth. Um, like they're not like Tanya always says like dogs like that have infections in their mouth are like you know breeding ground for like disease and stuff like that and so she was like yeah that's true and she was like you know so you are have you'll have a healthier dog and she's like number you know one or whatever it'll completely take away their bad breath which Boo and Tucker have the worst breath in the entire world um she said it'll eliminate that completely and the other thing is she said people don't really have any idea how in pain their dogs are from their teeth until they have their teeth extracted, if they're bad. She's like, because I said, I said, my concern is, like, I want them to be able to continue to have a quality of life, like, and enjoy, like, they love treats, and they love eating their food, and stuff like, and she's like, well, they're not using those teeth now anyway, and she's like, they can continue to eat treats, and eat food, and whatever. She's like, that won't be a problem. They already don't eat, like, hard bones and stuff. So, um, I was like, are you sure? She was like, yeah. So, she was like, but here's the thing, Peter. She was like, a lot of people don't realize until they have their dog's teeth extracted because they can't tell us. She's like, we don't real, they didn't, people don't realize how in pain their dogs were from their teeth until they're gone. Well, Boo Radley in the last six months has been sleeping like a lot. Like Tucker gets up like right away, like when the alarm goes off, but Boo Radley just lays there. And he has seemed kind of in pain to me, like slower and stuff like that. And she said he was completely fine when they checked him out, the other vet. And so I'm like, maybe he is in pain from his teeth and we're not aware of it, you know? So we're gonna get that done as soon as possible. And, but other than that, like our pups are in great shape, which makes me very, very happy. I said to her, because I said, you know, oh, I'm telling everybody that they need to, was this the last time or this time? I don't, it wasn't this time, it was last. Something about, I'm telling all of my friends that like, as soon as they get a puppy, they need to brush their teeth and get dent to bones. Cause like those green greenies are really, which we gave to our dogs forever, you know, are really supposed to help with their teeth and stuff. And she's like, yeah, she's like, but Peter, she's like, there's just some dogs that have notoriously bad teeth. She's like, like little dogs. She's like, little dogs just have bad teeth. She was like, um, it's just kind of like, 
most little dogs do not have the greatest teeth of all. So, oh, by the way, so that's the whole situation with Tucker. He's doing really, really well. I was very proud of him. He was so good at the, um, the little dog hospital and um, he was so sweet. I forgot, there was like only one person at a time, you know, when you're in there. And um, I had forgotten to bring his, I don't know how much of this I said already, cause I don't, it just stopped. Um, but when I took Tucker to the, the vet, I had forgotten his leash. And so I had to carry him the whole time, right? But there was nobody else in the, in the, the waiting area because they're just having one person go in at a time. Like you sit in your car and then they call you and then, um, we actually had to wait quite a while, but I, I mean, I didn't mind. I didn't have anything else to do, but we had to wait like a half an hour. Um, but then they call you and then you bring your dog in and, um, and they can only have, you can only have one person with the pet, um, you know, masked of course and everything. They're like very safe there. And, um, so anyway, I, I don't know which way to go. If I should turn left or right up here, I'm like, which way is going to be the sun? Hmm. I'm going to turn left and we're going to hope for the best. But then the sun will be behind me. Maybe I should just turn around. I should probably turn around and go home because I need to, that's what I'm going to do. Because I need to um, get home and start making videos anyway. So, he was so good. Like, at one point, I had to, like, this is what I was going to say. I had to pay for, like, the bill and all this kind of stuff. So, I set him down on the ground. And um, he just stood right by my side. He was so sweet. <laughs> but the other thing I wanted to say was about the licking. This is where I think it stopped. I didn't get to say this part. Um, so, I said to her, I said, you know, I said, I don't know if this is from PP Because, like, PP used to do it. And maybe they, like taught pee, pee or or pee, pee taught them or whatever but they lick constantly and she was like what do you mean and I said they lick constantly like Tucker licks it licks his crochet blanket he licks the fur blanket like they constantly constantly are licking right and she's like well she's like that can be a couple different things she's like but one of the things possibly it could be is GERD and she was like it can be like an esophagus thing and she was like esophagus thing esophagus esophagus thing and she was like and that can, down the road with dogs, lead to esophagus problems, and we don't want that. She was like, so I'm gonna have you start with um, a small amount of Prilosec. And so she told me how to, I think, quarter it. Um, so I have to get some Prilosec for them. She said it's hard for dogs to overdose on Prilosec. Um, so she was like, but she was like telling me, because we have like one of those, um, if you have to give your dogs, oh, this is light, I am sorry you guys. Now I'm completely in the dark. Well, we had to go back this way anyway, so it is whatever. But um, if you guys have to give your dogs pills, there's this thing that you can buy, you probably already know this, but it's like a pill haver and then quarter, you can haver like H8. It, you can take a pill, like even the smallest pill in the world, and it, it's like this V, and then you push this thing down and it will like make it a half, the pill and then you can put it in there again and it'll make it a fourth of the pill you can do it until like an eighth of a pill if it won't but it's sometimes like they crush up finally but with pp it was great because with the medication that he had to take um you know we, there were a couple pills i don't even remember what pills he was on now but um god it seems so crazy that was so hard for me that was one of the hardest things for me i remember alex and i standing there in the kitchen and i just like i opened that cabinet and the pills were there and i and i almost could not throw the pills away. And I was like, I guess we should throw these away. And he was like, babe, there's no reason, we don't need them anymore. Anyway, that was such a hard, that was such a hard thing. Um, I still have all the little guys, little costumes and hats and stuff. Like sometimes I look at it and I'm just like, what do I do with this stuff, you know? I mean, Boo and Tucker could wear it, but it just seems like, I don't know, it seems like it's pee-pee stuff, you know? Uh, which, by the way, you guys know I love that channel, uh, Nick and Poncho, where Nick had the little Chihuahua Poncho that it passed away, like, probably like two months after Pee Pee passed away. It was always my dream for them to do a little collab video together, which I knew was never going to happen because he, I think he lives in Switzerland or something, but, um, it was always kind of like my dream. No, he lives in Italy. It was always my dream. So, Nick, I just happened to, like, 
one of his videos popped up on like my recommended or my subscriptions or something when I was uploading videos the other day. And I was like, I wonder if he's put anything else on his Nick and Poncho channel. It was like an old Nick and Poncho video. So I went over there and he had just this week posted videos. And he got a new dog. And guess what his dog's name is? Boo. I was so excited. And it's a rescue dog. He rescued it. And the dog is like super, super scared. And wouldn't come out from underneath the couch. And the first video is like... It just come, it's like a 23 second video and it's like coming this week or something. And then the next video is like he bringing Boo home and his wife is at the house too. And like them working with, it's all done just to like music. I mean, he does such fantastic videos, but um, it's him uh, coaxing Boo out underneath the couch because he's like the dog goes underneath the couch and won't come out with like pieces of hot dog. It's very sweet and it goes from that, I don't want to tell you in case you want to go watch the video, but it's from that to him like the dog playing and running around in the yard and it's like takes like 23 days or something like that and he shows like the whole process. He's like day one, day 10, day you know 20. It's very sweet. So he's got a new dog uh, over there. Which I was watching, you know, I mean, I don't, we have Boo and Tucker, so maybe that's the difference, but I was like watching it. And as I started watching it, I thought, I wonder if this is gonna make me wanna get another dog. And it didn't, you know, like I'm still not there yet. I don't know what that's about. I really, really hope, because I feel like my life has been profoundly changed by having Pee Pee Boo and Tucker, I really, really hope that I don't become the person that down the road, like when they're gone, that I'm like, I just don't want a dog anymore. Like, I really hope, I don't feel that way, but I do feel like I don't want to replace Pee Pee, you know? I would love to have another Chihuahua. Alex and I have talked about that. Um, I think he is not sure. Um, but I think right now we've chosen just to focus on Boo and Tucker and, um, you know, being the best dads that we can be to them. Oh, the battery is about to die. Oh, man. Well, you guys, listen, I think I'm going to get off here now. I mean, this is only 37 minute vlog, but. The majority of it's been in the dark anyway. <laughs> and I don't really have a whole lot more to share. And I'm like 15 minutes from home. So um, I'm just going to end this now. It's the shortest vlog in the world because I don't want to have to pull over and replace the battery. Then I'll have two batteries to film at home. I promise you I'll do a longer vlog tonight. And I hope you guys are having an amazing Wednesday. Happy hump day. Um, I love you guys so much. And um, I will see you in my next vlog tomorrow. Bye. Love ya. Love ya. Wait. Bye. Love ya.